Hello! Welcome to Bad at Board Games. Well, he's Bad at Board Games. My name is Brad Lake. And I'm Topher Ferguson. And we're Bad at Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today, we're going to be talking about... Today, we're continuing our top 100 games of all time. Snooze. <laughs> I like these lists. I like these lists, I watch too. everybody's lists. <laughs> I really do. Um, today, we're doing our second segment in this, so we are going from games... 81 90. to 90. Yes. So, or 90 to 81, depending on how you want to think about it. So we'll we're start going, at 90, though. We're counting down, yes. So we're going to start at 90. So if you missed our 91 to 100, go watch that video just so that you can see what is ranked a little bit lower than this list. But at that, I say we just go ahead and kick it off. You ready? Yeah, and you want to go watch that because you want to see what's in my high end of the list that's in his, like, lowest end of the list. Depending on how you think about that. His high as in... It's like 93, and it's... It's in the 90s, and it's going to be in his top 10. <laughs> and it's somewhere, possibly, in my top 10. We'll see if it makes the top 10. We yeah. played a lot of new games, so we did. maybe it didn't. We did. So, so. anyway, I'm, I'm, we're, we're trying to do these quickly, and I'm I'm already blowing the schedule. So <laughs> It's it's how we do things. Welcome to Battle Board Games. We might bicker. So, kick us off. 90. 90. 90. 90. Hi, Nice. Look at this little... I am surprised this is 90. It's cute. I thought this would have been... Higher? Higher, lower, however better. I think. Close, yeah, better. I thought it would be closer to one. Not so, one. I have had highs and lows with this game. Okay. I think that's why. Like, when me and you played it, I loved it. I've played my son. I've played Jamont. Like, I've played it, and it's just been kind of this... Yeah. It can... You can steamroll... You can. And if you're steamrolling so. somebody, it's not fun. And if you're getting steamrolled, it's, it's not, not fun. fun. So, and I'm decent at it. And so... I haven't won yet. No. At all. I think Hayden might have beat me. But, like, I don't know. I think sometimes it's, it's, there is, it, there's enough luck in it with the randomness of the cards and such that, you know, I've even had crappy starting whatever's mm -hmm. and still one but it was with this game that i finally admitted to myself that i really am not good at magic the gathering it really was like i am terrible at this game at the, at the uh, card battlers yeah one-on-one -on -one. but great art cute theme cute mad max as though that's cute but in a nice small box i i dig it but yeah. you know, it's it, like I said, it's 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 highs and lows with it. That's why it's where it's at. Number ninety. Yeah, number ninety. I like it. Mm -hmm. My number ninety is one that I was a little nervous whether I would like it or not. Turns out I liked it a whole lot. Um, and that is Cry Havoc. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know me, I'm a Euro gamer through and through. So I was a little nervous bringing this table, but I was excited to bring it to the table as well. And that excitement that was, definitely. That was one of your shelf of shame. So we wanted to make sure. I was like, let's get it to the table. Yeah, and we played it. It's been several months ago, um, but I definitely enjoyed it. So Cry Havoc actually won this mm -hmm. at a convention. And uh, with the expansion, we haven't played that yet, but did you? Staying. You won the game too, I think. I won the game and the expansion. Or let me rephrase that. When we played this game, yes. you won. Yes, I won. the Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. I forget which race I was playing, but uh, I think I was playing Blues. Um, yeah, and I was the... I don't know. You were the I, ones I was that the, could like set attack. up. Yeah, you I could was, set up air bases to send missiles and try to kill us, and yeah. he still lost. Snipers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that's my number 90. Mm -hmm. Cry Havoc. It's a cool game. Nine, uh, 90. Number yeah. 89. So this one's fun. This one's campy, but if you have kids or you have teenagers or anything, it's fun. I'm wondering what it is. Throw, throw, burrito. I still have not played this. When you stand around the table and you're just like, you, like, you don't even want to sit in chairs when you play this. You want to stand around the table and you want to sit and like pass the cards as fast as you can and then as soon as you can, you know, do the draw and throw burritos at each other and stuff, it's fun. Don't have anything fragile or breakable in the house i put a folding table outside so a bunch of teenagers could play this <laughs> i saw this at gen con and i saw people running around gen con in the hallways and i'm like what is that game and i'm like was really interested and then it, when i came back they already had it at, at target and walmart and it's <laughs> you get to throw these 
spongy burritos at each other. It's hilarious. So is this like spoons? I don't know spoons. Spoons don't have these fun things. It's like, right. Hey, this is fun. <laughs> I like this a lot. <laughs> Breakable things. Yes. Breakable things. They have, I think they have throw through avocado now too, but it's. I'm pretty sure it's the same. I wonder if it's like spoons. I've played spoons. Spoons are well, passing spoons cards are real like, fast, and then you grab the spoon. Whoever has the last spoon loses. Not like that. Oh, okay. But it is similar in the fact that you're passing cards. We used to go to conventions, not board gaming conventions, but others, and we would play in the hotel, but we would put all the spoons at one end of the hotel and we would play at the very other end. So like as soon as somebody had whatever it was, it was like a dead sprint to go get it. And then you had to weigh, were they joking? Like, did they actually have what they needed to go run? Now you got people tackling each other in the middle of the night. It was fun in college. We didn't break anything, surprisingly. (laughs) My 89 is a fun little game i you know i i'm kind of surprised it wasn't a little bit higher because i i like the mechanics of it but this is fun i enjoyed it Mm -hmm. we played it as a gaming group um i want to play the expansion i've heard that with the expansion it plays a lot better um but i enjoyed it and alex i think alex has it so Mm -hmm. i kind of so this continues to stay on the hotness i think it doesn't really drop below the top 20 on the hotness and we have um somebody in our gaming group that loves this game and I was thinking we haven't really done a full review on it and I'd like to do it. And I was thinking about doing it with Alex because then you would have typically you guys like the fact that me and Tove have different seen difference different is, of, of, of opinions. So on this one, I think we're similar. And so I think bringing somebody in who loves the game, then you'd be able to see mm-hmm. at least, at least get an idea of it, why we may not, it may not be in our top 10, but why it might be in Alex's, right? Yeah. And I have not yet played it with Alex. So I think if I played it with somebody who absolutely loved it, maybe I would see a little bit more of what clicked for them. Um, But I did enjoy it enough to want to keep playing it. Yeah. Obviously, it's making my top 100. But um, but yeah, Lost Ruins of Arnak, it's on the hotness. I don't exactly know why yet. I haven't played it enough to figure that out. And it's always been there. I mean, it's... But it's a good worker placement. Tech Mm -hmm. tree... Yeah. I'm a fan of worker placements, I think. I've played one or two in my life. A couple. <laughs> or 500. The tech tree I like a lot. I'm really surprised it's not a hundred, your top 100 and it's just worker placement. It's all one. <laughs> I like other mechanics, too. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Terraforming Mars is not worker placement. Come on, now. It's not good, either. <laughs> Where's that damn burrito? I'm going to get a real burrito and smack you upside the head with it. <laughs> all right. Um, it's not good. My heart is broken right now, I friend. Know. I love saying that, though. It makes me make, brings joy to my... makes me laugh. I have an eraser I can throw at you. My number 88. <laughs> Let me make it. Yeah. It is 88, yes. Ah, I don't know what I'm losing this. There we go. The highlight is on the wrong one. Tof, this is a great worker placement. He likes it. This is, this is nice, and I liked it with... Which expansion did we play with? Scoundrels... Uh, Scoundrels of Skull Port. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, I I think it would probably be too... I would find it not complicated enough without that expansion. So just as a... Like, this is very intro worker placement. Mm-hmm. So having that extra expansion in there gave me more depth. And, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would like it without it. Honestly. And we only played, I think, one of the expansions with Skullport. Mm-hmm. Scoundrels of Skullport adds in multiple expansions. It's the only expansion that they have for the game that I know of, but it has multiple modules within it. Yeah. Um, I, this game, the, the, you might see it again on my list a little bit later on. It's great worker placement. I like it just the base game, Mm -hmm. if you were playing with people who get into the theme, who get into these objectives that you're trying to go, the quests that you're going on, if you don't get into the quest and you just play it by mechanics, the base game is not very fun. You do need the expansion. Yeah. I'm glad that made your list. Yeah, it's a nice game. I've been wanting to play this and then this was like when we we first started doing this over a year ago, he's like, oh, I have that. And I'm like, I've wanted to play that. You know, I like D&D love the artwork on here and just have never played it. And so it was fun. I'm like, oh, you have it? Great. And you like it? Let's play it. Well, yeah. You know, like, it took us a while still to get it to the table, but um, I really like it. Yeah. I want to play it again. Mm-hmm. That was my number. I'll get it wrong again. Number 88. Yes. My number 88. I'm surprised it made my list. Brad's going to be shocked when he sees this. Uh, it made my list because it's a good, solid game. 
It's not a game for me, but it's a good solid game. And that's the biggest box that's gonna be on this list. That is TI4. If this game was two to three hours, it would be high on my list. Because even though it's not my game, the fact that it takes five, six, seven hours eight, ten, or longer, <laughs> it's just the negotiation gets me. I'm not big on conflict. I'm not big on conflict. Uh, I think it also would be dependent on who I play it with. I think if I was playing this with our gaming group, maybe you, Alex, um, Lee, maybe some people who are, uh, Alex is quite cutthroat, um, maybe that are not quite as cutthroat, it may not be quite as bad. Yeah. Um, and if it was half the time. No, <laughs> so it's a long game. I, it's a long game. And this is on my list. It's higher up. But um, I would really love to have this be a once every four months game for me. Honestly, like I, I would like to have a group of five that like to play this and it's a Saturday or a Sunday and play it. That's, that's where I would, you know, it's hard to find play groups. Right. But, um, that would, I would, I would enjoy that. I think if that ever came to pass in the future. Yeah. So. And it's weird because I do not mind long games yeah. and you'll see lower on my list games that could take eight hours or right. more, um, depending on how you play. But this one just, it didn't, it didn't make it higher on my list, yeah. but, they did a fantastic job creating this game. There is a beauty in the mechanics, even though they're not necessarily my favorite mechanics. It is, so. yeah. Artwork is fantastic. Like it's good production quality. I, and everybody says to play it at the higher counts is really where you need it to sing. We've only been able to pull it at, at <laughs> four. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think I would like you're to more play in, it. You, you are doing more, but at the same time, then you're also waiting more, but you know, I would like to play it at the high, at yeah. a high end of the player count. I, I would like it. that just to try it. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if I would like it more. I, yeah. I think it, yeah, I think yeah. I might Make actually a day of enjoy it, it more. And, you know, barbecue or whatever might, mm -hmm. be, might be kind of a thing. Yeah. So that's your number 88. That's your number 88. So my 87 is the most cutthroat game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> uh oh. It is. What I is it? What do you have that's that cutthroat? brew <laughs> every turn every turn you take is putting the screws to somebody else like i've never seen in a game before i thought cosmic frog was take that no this I, cosmic frog is take that but it takes you time to go over and do the take that this is like oh i just rolled dice now i'm going to take your stuff i'm going to block your thing i'm going to take the thing that you wanted <laughs> It is. <laughs> Who won? I think I did, didn't I? Or did you? I did. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it's, it, you know, my friend got it for me at Gen Con. He got, he was talking to the designer. He knew I liked autograph boxes from the designer. So he, he picked it up for me. And it's fun. It is mean. It, it, okay. <laughs> I don't think it has to be, but I was playing with him. And therefore, it was mean. Um, yeah, because you don't have to be cutthroat. You can play your own game, and but, I can play my own game. But this game is meant to be could... played mean. I don't know about that. <laughs> we should be lovers, not fighters, Brad. Well, wait, no. no. Let me, let me no. rephrase that. No. We should be kind, not cutthroat, Brad. So. No. Okay. I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. My 87 turned out to be a pretty cutthroat game. And that is a game we laughed the whole way through as a gaming group. High player count, definitely played at the high player count. Cosmic Encounter. That was fun. It, it, go check out our video of that one. I'm, that one's fun. I, I really enjoyed doing the, the intro of that one, too. <laughs> we all ended up, I don't know how I had a voice, but I had a voice throughout the whole game. It was yeah, ridiculous. It was like a some southern debutante kind of strange thing it going was, on there. I don't even know where it came from. I didn't attempt to do it. It just came out. And then we all ganged up on Brad and just destroyed him. Yeah. So it's funny because like two people can win the game if you get, I don't know, five points or whatever it is. So that everybody won except me. Brad. We had what, like a five-way win? Yeah, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was funny. It was really funny. But yeah, that was a good one. That's a good one. Yes. And that's your number... 87. 87. So, my 86 is one of Toast's, and I I enjoyed playing this, and we, we just played it kind of to pass the time after 
we got done playing another game, and that was Elder Sun. Oh, I should have brought that over. I yeah, I, I, I like that game. Um, it's definitely one. Now I've played the app one, and that I don't. I, I've gotten sucked into the app, but at the same time, I don't like the app. I like the app a lot. I do. <laughs> but I like dice chucking, and if you die, you get the next. Yeah, it's in, my player investigator, and, and, and like you just keep going. Like mm-hmm. I liked that. That made it a lot more fun for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is, and it's just a nice. You can sit there and play, and you're you're talking, and it's not so serious. And I don't know. I just really enjoyed enjoyed yeah. playing it. Of of the, the actual Arkham, game. yeah, of the Arkham universe. I think it's one of the lighter plays. Mm-hmm. Although it's not lightweight. It's not easy. No, it's not easy no, at all. You still, it's still all the luck based and trying to like the statistics of you being able to roll that symbol and things like that. Yeah. But. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I like it. Mm-hmm. I need to bring it over and we need to play some of the expansions because mm-hmm. um, I think you would enjoy those too. <laughs> yeah. So, Good so game. that's my number 86. Excellent. My 86 is a mechanic that I'm not very good at and I'm not overly excited about, but it works in this game. And I think that's because it's a horror theme. That is Letters from Whitechapel. I really enjoy this, but hidden movement, I am not a big fan of. Yeah, and there's one a, a little higher on my list that I'm like, oh, Tofel like this because he likes Whitechapel. And I didn't realize he just likes hidden movement in this game. In this game. He doesn't like hidden movement. <laughs> yeah, because the other game that he's talking about made 127 on my list. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> We'll get to that later on, but no, I just like this game, and I I love Jack the Ripper. I like that theme. Mm. I like the I like playing Jack. I also like playing the police going after Jack. I think it just it works well. They did a very good job with this game. I know there's a couple other ones similar to this. There's one that's a little bit lighter weight. I don't think this needs to be any lighter weight. Um, but I play a lot with gamers, so maybe if it was a family or something like that, maybe you'd want to. Yeah, you know, it's a great family game. Let's go out and try to hunt down a murderer. There you go. It's good times. Yeah, <laughs> some say it might have been we in keep, Chicago at the World Fair. We keep Fair. Get, keep meaning to play it at Halloween, and then something happens. We never get a chance. Yeah, it's like every time we go to bring it over and play it, something something yeah. happens. So, so we are now hitting a crossover ish in the same hmm. section of ten, and that's Lost Ruins of Arnak. So the worst thing about this game is the box. Lid. I don't like the art. The art in the box is really good. This makes you think it's too real campy and cartoonish and trying overly hard to be Indiana Jones. And the artwork in the box is actually pretty serious and pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, I I think CGE does a nice job. They're able to give you okay components, but they're okay because they lower the price on them. Yeah. So that's CGE's, you know, in that forty dollar price range is, is is really nailed it. And I, you know, they do they do a nice job. But at the same time, to me, their games are a little bit on the they're at like a two weight rating. Yeah, they're medium and, weight games. Uh, you know, I really do like medium plus games the most. And that doesn't mean all of them, but you know, obviously throw throw a burrito, but. Um, but this is still higher than Throw the Burrito. It, it's a nice game, and I, I would play it, and I really wanted to love it like a lot of people do, but I like it. Um, it's just not a, I love it. That's why I want to play it again. Mm-hmm. I want to love it like people love it. Yeah. Or maybe even like it like people like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a good it's a good game. I understand why it's it's always right there. Yeah. It's Need well, to explore more of mm-hmm, it. So, mm-hmm. so that Excellent. one is my, sorry. That's 85. 85. My 85, finally we got back to, we got to to play as the gaming group, Mm. um, and that is a lighter weight civilization game. So this is Sid Meier's Civilization, A New Dawn. Um, Not quite as in-depth as Sid Meier's Civilization or some of the other Civ games like Through the Ages, Um, but I think it's a lot of fun. The action selection component of this is the same mechanic that they based Ark Nova off of, which I think you would enjoy you didn't get to play it with us, um, but I think you would enjoy this. Um, fun little lighter weight Civ game, hmm. um, but it's it's pretty cool. A little asymmetry, but not much. So yeah, it's and you guys got done, what, even. two and a half hours? Something like that, with the teach. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, so. Yeah, that's decent. And there's quite a bit of components. I don't have a box organizer, so that kind of. Took time. Yeah, takes time to, to put it out, so. Yeah. But 
Fun little game. I need to play this with you. And that's number... That is number 85. Number 85. I'm not going to be swishing doing a lot of graphics in these until we get to the lower in accounts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Toph got this one as my number 84. I like it. I think it's a good game. I wish it had the old graphics. And that's ah. Libertalia. This, you know, this this was hot. Like, mm -hmm. ah! And then it's just, now you don't hear about it. But good old game, good new game. It, it's it's a solid it's a solid game. Mm -hmm. That's really the most I can tell you tell you about it is I, I just think it's a solid game. I'm a little disappointed by the artwork. Yeah. And it's and it's fantastic. Watch our review of it so you'll see why I, I mentioned that, but it's fantastic for families. Like Stone mm -hmm. made this accessible to probably people that wouldn't have picked it up based on the theme and artwork from mm -hmm. the first batch. They also improved some things, I think, in terms of the mechanics. Yeah. But um it's it is a solid game. Mm -hmm. It is a solid game, even with artwork i don't appreciate myself yeah so that's where we're at and that is my number 84 84 my 84 you probably did not think was going to be on my list okay so i struggle with this game because this is another one i want to love so much and it's not clicking with me and it's frustrating the you know what out of me and that is gaia project i'm very surprised this made his top 100 <laughs> It made my list last time, I think, uh, last year. So I thought maybe it'd be the theme. I'm not as big in the space theme so much as I am the Terra Mystica fantasy theme. I think I would enjoy that theme better, but it's pretty much the same game with some, some minor improvements here or there. It's just, I don't know what it is about it that doesn't click enough. If it did, I think this would make it up on my top 25. Yeah, so I got it back there in the top. My top right, maybe your top left. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure. So I got the, the Terra Nova, which is supposed to be the it's Terra Mystica Light. It's Gaia Project Light. I wish they had made, you know, Terra Gaia Nova or whatever. But like, <laughs> you know, just because I prefer the space theme. But I'm hoping that as we play that, he likes it. Then so I can, can suck him back, back into over. this. <laughs> yeah. Because this is a great game. I I like this game so much, and it hurt. So it hurts him that I don't like terraforming Mars. It hurts me that he doesn't like this because <laughs> I want to play this more. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. It's such a good game. Yeah. It's just, oh, I don't know what it was about it. And that's your number eighty four. Number eighty four. So oh, I so there's one reason, and I didn't realize until we just did tile tone review. I think there's one reason you don't like that game. And I realized it when you talked about Totham. Uh The track? The King's track? And well, no, it's... You don't... You, you less, you're less likely to like a game when it has... Here's the objective every round. Because you want that long mm -hmm. objective at the end. That and Gaia well Project is, yeah. really is about hitting those... Here now. This is the objective in this round. Mm -hmm. And this round. And this round. Now... You know, Terracotta point. Army had a little bit of both mm -hmm. because it's like, how did you place all your army at the end? So you still got that. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, it made me wonder if that, I know the, and we're talking way too yeah, long on this and apologize. The Rondell part of the it, Rondell the part, moving things around yeah, just, is, is, is challenging. But I also mm -hmm. kind of wondered, I'm like, I wonder if, it, if that might be another reason you don't like that. That could be. That very well could be. Yeah. Hard to say. Sorry. Yeah. 83. What's on your 83? 83. Well, I got so I got Tove to play this one. He'd been wanting to play it for a long time. As I start talking away from the mic, he'd been wanting to play this a long time. Show the box. I wanted to. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's like? What Funny is Kingdom. this game? <laughs> I wanted them to hear what I had to say. <laughs> Sorry. So, but um, I think you thought it was all right. It was all right. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. if your family, if you have kids and stuff, this is a great one for that. And this, this is definitely a gateway game. I think Yellow did a great job of this. I think Yellow used to make better games than they make now. Um, you know, I think, you know, but I think publishers go up and down a lot, but I'm, this is a good game. I'm a little confused why they're listing the player count at 14 plus. Or not player count, the age mm. as 14 plus. I didn't think it was that challenging or My kids played this well, well before 14. Yeah, I felt it was a lot lower. It was probably 10. Yeah. I think I played this. I think they were 10 and 12 or something. 
It's a fun game. It's a cute little game. Yeah, yeah. it's cute. I mean, I like it. It's probably always going to be on my top 100, um, mainly because of memories and, mm-hmm. and things like this. But this is a good game. It's solid if you've never played it and you have, you've got kids and you're trying to get them into the, that. This theme, these things, this is a good one to try out. Yeah, nice little, nice little theme in it. Yep, that's my number 83. My 83, we have discussed, so a little bit of a crossover, and that is Wormholes Space Uber. Yep. It's, so. a good, it's a good, it's a solid mechanic. Yeah, it's a fun little game. I enjoy it. We talked about it already, so we won't talk much about it, but um, good little game by AEG. Um, yep. Well worth it, I think. Pick it up. Peter good McPherson did a good job. Still, we still haven't played Tiny Towns. We'll probably get to that one of these days. Yeah, one of these days I want to play that one. I, I think I was a little bit more excited about that, but this is solid. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number 82... Tove got, and then I was like, I don't, I thought it was a different game. And then when he brought it over, I'm like, oh, I don't know what that game is. But um, Mm. it's Fantastic Factories. There's a, there's another one with pipes and like tile lane. And I was just like, I don't ever want to play that. I thought that's what he was bringing. I was like, no, (laughs) I don't want to play that game. But uh, this is fun. This is, this is the chaining thing. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I got it. And I think I beat you. I think you did. So I don't think I've won this game yet with anybody that I've played it with. That was fun. So <laughs> yeah, I like this. This you know my brain clicks with it, and it, it was a cute little dice placement. Yeah. Yep, nice little game. I get it. Excellent. My eighty-two. I want this to be higher on my list, and maybe it will now. I like it at the moment solely because of the mechanic, but I didn't understand the theme at all when we played it. Oh. And that is Dune Imperium. <laughs> I finally made him sit down and watch it. Yes. I, I, I've watched it like 20 times now. So I, Now that I've watched the movie, and I kind of want to watch it again, but now that I've watched the actually it was a good movie. It's a good movie. Um, now that I've watched the movie, I want to play it again because when we played this before, Brad knew the theme well. I knew nothing about it. I have the books. I have not read the books yet, have not watched the movie. So I was like, I, what is the spice garbage? I've, I liked the old movie that everybody hated too. So <laughs> it's like, oh, come on. I might, I'm, when I play it again, it might jump higher now that I understand the houses and the planets and the, yeah. what spice is and all that kind of stuff. Yep, so. yep, yep. Good game. It is a solid worker placement. Yeah. And that's is. why I thought he would like it. But then, yeah, you still, you really do have to understand or enjoy the theme. Yeah. It there makes were just such a difference that I in games. Not, yeah. It really uh, does. Yeah. So, and that's your number 82? That's 82. All right. On to my set. 81. And this one is brand new, but I've played it a couple times. I've had a, Good experience solo and an okay experience with Toph and my son. But I like the Mm -hmm. miniatures. I like what they're trying to do with the game. I have some complaints with the game. But right now, I I will probably enjoy this the most solo, honestly. Lobotomy 2, I like what they're trying to do. I like all the pop culture, you Mm -hmm. know, characters that you can be. I thought this was going to be more like Cthulhu Death May Die. It is really more like a dungeon crawl. Yeah. It's it's a mix. It's I thought it was going to be Zombicide meets Cthulhu, and it's really a little bit, not so much Zombicide, kind of Cthulhu, and then a dungeon crawl. You know, like, it's, it's more a dungeon crawl with those other things, like the yeah. characters give you that Cthulhu Death May Die or Zombicide. Uh-huh. thing and but the monsters aren't rushing you as much as zombicide and you don't get as powerful as you do in cthulhu death may die it's a tough this is a tough game very tough and i would love it to be a little bit and they make and i've looked at cards they've got a way to make it easier and i'll probably be playing it on the easier levels because it makes it more fun i want it to be a fun game not something that's just like beats you into the ground it is extremely fiddly, and that I I don't mind fiddliness in games. I've got a game on here that's completely everybody complains about it being so fiddly. It's a little bit higher up. You haven't played it yet, um, but it it was a lot. It was a lot. I I did not enjoy it. I enjoyed being with the people who we played it with. It was Ashby, Brad, and I. I enjoyed that. Uh, Hayden. Oh, was it Hayden? Hayden. Yeah, Hayden. Sorry, Hayden, Brad, and I. I enjoyed the characters. I like you said the pop culture part of it, but I did not enjoy the play. 
Um, but you also said that the campaign is much better than just that. I just started off. off with the campaign and I really enjoyed that. And it came down to the end, like how I wanted the game to be. Yeah. And then when we played it, it just felt like a slog and it, it took a long time. Like it says it's supposed to be like an hour to two hour kind of thing. I think it took us three, over three hours, over three hours. and we weren't. We weren't going slow. We were not trying to go slow. We weren't looking up rules and all these other kinds of things. So I en I enjoyed so many aspects of it. I just when it was all put together, yeah. it was like Ugh. yeah. I mean, so we will do a review of that. There will be reasons, and we'll. I think there's better characters and worse characters, and I think the character set we picked, we picked characters we liked, and there's characters that are more powerful that you kind of need to play in the game. And I will play that campaign before we do that. Yeah. that video because i want to see that campaign side yeah not maybe not the whole campaign yeah but just, but just a couple of modules or, or something yeah yeah yep. yep. so that's Excellent. my number 81 my 81 <laughs> none of you will think is on my list but it is a solid game i just never want to play it again <laughs> and i did not bring over my oh, box i know because this is, yeah. my box is the older version and i was bringing over a ton of boxes to your game so or to your house so i left it but this is Brad's version. Um, I'm going to call it by the true name, and that is the Settlers of Catan, because that's how I know it, and that's what's written on my box. They have rebranded it as Catan. Fantastic game. I have played it for t over 20 years now. I never want to play it again, but it will never leave my collection because it's it's a solid. It'll fantastic. always be on your top 100. Too. It'll always be on. Yeah, it will always be on He's my top played 100. it out. Yeah. And I've got all the expansions. I will tell you expansions. I will never play again. Like I will not. I'll play this game. I will never play Seafarers again. Um, I will probably never play it without Cities and Knights. Um, but it's it it's a good game, and it's been so long since I've played it that I kind of want to play it. There you go. But I really don't. To you be heard honest. that. You heard that here. Just remember, you you were here when that happened. I get that itch where I was like, man, I haven't played Catan in a long time. It'd be fun to play that. And then I'm like, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> So, anyways, that is our number yep. 81. Oh, you're only going to 80. That's right. Yeah. I keep yeah. thinking we're going to go to the next. I'm the math major. Let me yeah. let me worry about the I'll numbers. I'll let him do it. So, 81 to 90 out of our top 100. If you did not check out our 91 to 100, please go check that out as well. And get ready for the next edition, which will be 71 to 80 coming at you very soon. So, let us know what it is that you enjoyed about this video or what you did not enjoy about the video. If you've done your top 100, comment down below what your numbers 81 to 90 were. We'd love to see that. Any overlaps? Any thoughts? Did you enjoy these games? Do you hate my games or his, Team Tope? Um, yeah, let me know. We're great. We're going to do that this time, too. <laughs> Just remember, no matter how you play, whether it's solo, with family, or friends, enjoy whatever games you are bringing to the table. Have a great night. Except for Katana.